from setting sun to intermission to dark side and underwear. There was no shortage of screensaver applications in the days of the old CRT monitors. And it makes sense. Everyone had a monitor that was susceptible to burn-in, and nobody wanted that to happen. It's such a shame that screensavers died a death, as really, they could have happily have lived on within a computer's lock screen. Today on Yesteryear's Mac Apps, we're going to be getting hands-on with version 4 of the most popular commercial screensaver of them all. After Dark 4 was sadly the last proper After Dark to come out, which was a result of the developer, Berkeley Systems, being purchased by Sierra Online, which was in turn purchased by Vivendi. It was a sad end as the studio was then put to work on developing a gambling website. What a waste. Anyway, After Dark 4 retailed in 1996 in this delightful box, with its most recognisable module slapped on the front. After Dark compatible? Well, I should bleeding well hope so. The flying toasters have been a part of After Dark since version 2, it's a registered trademark which they ended up in court over on two occasions, and it's synonymous with goofy 90s software. On the back are a few screenshots of some of the modules included, and some blurb in various languages that won't be present on North American boxes. The hybrid CD contains installers for Windows and Macintosh, and sits within a case that also functions as a prompt for the user to purchase additional themed module packs, which I guess we would call DLC today. There's also a registration card, and an instruction book that looks substantial, but is actually rather sparse in info. Each OS gets their own section in here, which is then repeated in five different languages. Installing on Macs running the various System 7s is simple. Run the installer, uncheck the web modules, which most certainly won't work anymore, and then restart the system. After Dark is an extension, so upon installation, a user will see a flappy toaster pop up alongside the others during startup. I've stuck this on a machine running 8.1, which is incompatible with the version of the application on the disk. For whatever reason, screensavers will start when manually activated as a demo by the user, but the computer won't fade to them on their own, and will in some cases lock up. Thankfully, a minor update is available that rectifies this, that can be found on the application's listings on the garden and the repo. The After Dark control panel can be found in the Apple menu bar, which is where we will spend the rest of the vid, looking through all of the included 23 standard modules that it comes with. Art Critic is the first, and upon commencing, will slap the user in the face with a bit of audio that couldn't get any more 90s if it bought a Tamagotchi and put on a novelty tie. This module is pretty dang customizable, and is basically a slideshow of a bunch of images that can be switched out by the user to whatever they want, which are then critiqued by the critic. As we saw there, the critic clearly doesn't know what good art is, and should be fired. Bad dog strikes me as a dysfunctional screensaver, and I'm not referring to the behaviour of the dog here, rather its depiction of the desktop, which includes some of the same elements liable for burning that this is supposed to relieve, such as the menu bar, thus defeating the original purpose. This one then is just here to look pretty. It's not going to save the screen. The bad dog scuttles around this pretend desktop, digging holes, chewing things, and generally making a mess. I had one of those, oh that's where that's from, moments with Cyberwat. The fella in goggles is in Gamer Mouse's intro sequence. Gamer Mouse is worth a sub by the way, mostly old Mac stuff with plenty of analysis. Top channel. Once the gentleman has equipped his faceware, the module pretends to download something, spewing fictional cyber babble across random parts of the screen. The user can set the colour of this, or let it cycle. Fishworld is a returning module, users have the ability to select what they want in the tank and toggle the underwater sounds on and off. This is a module for those that fancy something a tad more sensible, although while there's nothing wrong with it, I do feel it's a bit overshadowed by the rest of them. Next up then, is the module that makes After Dark, After Dark. The Flying Toasters module got more and more elaborate with each revision of the program, and version 4's was its peak, packing in heaps of novelty animations and karaoke with a bouncing bagel that made me rather hungry. Sliders control how many toasters there are on the screen, and turn the sound and music on and off. They also enable the user to select another version, Baby Toasterettes, a nice little change of pace that comes with a few unique graphics and flight patterns. Shout out to this particularly enlightened lyric by the way. With this relaxed atmosphere, users can sit back and calmly ponder the important questions, such as, where do baby toasters come from? One of the more conceptual modules is Guernsey Madness, which is thankfully only silhouettes of Guernsey cattle wandering around the screen in a user-defined colour to a goofy soundtrack, as opposed to a new strain of mad cow disease. An occasional moo will emanate from the system too, 
This is the kind of thing that I would have my computer doing in a workplace while off making a cup of tea, with a lock screen preventing anyone from stopping it. <laughs> Hula Twins is fairly low key. I actually think that the references to it in other modules are more interesting than the module itself. Two twins trot in to acquire hula hoops, which then achieve orbit around them. This immensely repetitive music loop plays ad nauseum and continued to loop on in my head for hours after I turned it off. Life and all gets very annoying in the audio department very quickly. I'm not all that fond of this one, even with the Hitchhiker's reference in the settings. It basically draws out an elaborate and nonsensical equation using images, accompanied by a painfully limited set of sound effects. Moving swiftly on then. Magic Turtle draws various shapes on the screen in random colours. There are eight to choose from. Marbles is an existing module that's had all of its sprites given a pre-rendered tart-up, alongside an increase in variety of objects that they can bash on their way down. The acceleration and velocity, as well as how they ricochet around, is fairly realistic, and likely requires some fairly hefty mathematics to do right, so it's unlikely to run smoothly on an FPU-less 68K Mac. Messages 4.0 has the number in its title as its functionality has been done, presumably, three times prior. Type a message and have the computer depict it in a particular way. This edition of the module can have them build in as wonky letters, or have a horrible dismembered hand write it on a steamed up window, and I'd say that is quite unintentionally creepy. Out and About is quite a nice one. This module simulates a town square, complete with outdoor seating for a cafe, kids playing football, beatniks making a racket, packs of wild lawyers hunting for an accident victim, the fuzz, and a disproportionate volume of nuns. I really like the visuals for this one. It's busy, characterful, and not overtly in your face. Points of view is a nice simple one. A swirling shape made out of dots bounces and rotates around the screen to a serene tune. Too serene? No problem. Others can be selected in its place including the tracks of a CD that might be in the computer. This feature saves the module from being immensely boring. Psychodeli gradually builds in a rather psychedelic visual. I didn't think much of this one until I noticed the text telling me to switch to 256 colours. After doing that, it improved immensely, as visuals it made drew in significantly faster and then started moving. Very nice. Rainforest is a lot like the fish tank, in that the user can select from nine options of insect and reptile to hop, fly and scuttle across the screen. These creatures deviate with their movements and produce a fairly pleasant and very colourful scene. Rock, paper, scissors has the titular items toddle around the screen until they encounter one another. They then proceed to have a fight. You can see how they're doing with the health bars below. Eventually one of the items will emerge victorious. Here's an interesting one. Roger Dodger isn't really a screensaver, but rather a game. With visuals that reminded me of the Ricochet games, the player moves this numerous sided shape about to collect squiggles, while avoiding the rather fast moving red things which lose the player a life. The game would be recycled in After Dark Games the following year, which as far as I can see, contained minimal improvements. Shadow agents see small weasel-like creatures sneak around the screen carrying various things they probably shouldn't have. It's quite kooky. The animations are varied and the little tune in the background fits, but as with other modules featuring the desktop, is it really saving the screen? Nah. Slow Burn is another colour cycling module, with visuals that resemble embers slowly making their way across the screen, until they meet another one and consume each other. It comes with a tune, but it isn't really all that interesting if I'm honest. Super Guy is some kid pretending to be a superhero. He runs around with various scenarios playing out in comic book style text boxes, does karate chops, and occasionally uses a means of transport or a tool. The highlight is watching him faceplant the floor. Why does he need a helmet on top of his helmet? I really enjoyed swirling magic. This simulates a bunch of dots moving in a particular manner depending on what the user has selected. In this example, they swish around like a fibre optic light. Other options are more pattern centric, with different colour palettes available to choose between. Time flies is a clock. There are two types, one is functional and boring, the other looks nice but isn't particularly readable. Now it's not in the main list, but Starry Night is actually included with After Dark 4 as well, hidden in the multi-modules section, which is largely redundant as all the After Dark 4 modules are incompatible with this feature. Starry Night has barely, if at all, changed from its original implementations in version 1. Various dots depict a cityscape under a brilliant sky of stars. Considering its simplicity, it's still actually very nice. So, that's all the 23 bundled modules. 22 if you discount Starry Night. It wasn't uncommon for apps and games to come bundled with a few additional desktop patterns, and After Dark 4 was no exception. It's a neat little bonus, although some of these do fall foul of making items on the desktop a bit difficult to see. Overall, After Dark 4 is a pretty competent package, and while there is a bit of carryover from previous instalments, these have at least been improved in one way or another. 
I think it's also worth mentioning that aside from the official packs, additional modules for After Dark could also come from anyone who cared to make them. Mac format cover discs of the era usually had a few, and version 4 of After Dark should just about run them all. Some quick examples include this Barney Blaster one, which takes cues from the game Barney Carnage, crayons, which has a series of crayons squiggle things on a piece of paper, faces that are... are faces, and Triazzle, which interestingly came from Berkeley Systems themselves, and seems to be an early version of Jungle Floor. The ability to add additional modules was not exclusively left in the realms of users. There was money to be made, and Berkeley Systems churned out more packs to part cash with thick and fast. I happen to have one of these here, the totally twisted pack, complete with a throne on the front, and will have a neb at all its zany glory at some point in the future. Stay tuned for that then, and subscribe if you want to avoid missing it. So, if you've got a favourite or least favourite module, a memory or opinion in general, do share it in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for sticking around so long, and see you next time.